Hey, welcome to another video interview brought to you by AICHG's online community, Connected. My name is Christine Chin, and I'm the Director of Technical Programming for AICHG, and I will be your host today. I have here um, Aris Kendris, who served as the CEO and President of Westinghouse Electric Company, and is now a senior advisor there. He spent his career at Westinghouse focused on the nuclear energy industry. And today, he's speaking at today's 2012 annual meeting, Plenary, where he examines the question, is there life after Fukushima? The disaster at the Fukushima nuclear power plant sparked a national debate over nuclear energy. How has the accident at the Fukushima nuclear plant continued to affect the industry? Well, obviously it was a horrendous accident and uh, it has had a significant impact on the industry as a whole. Uh, let me go back and talk for just a few seconds about the accident because there are a lot of misconceptions about it. The, the accident happened as a result of, a, of an earthquake and a tsunami that was significantly higher than what that plant was designed for. That tsunami, as you know, killed close to about 20,000 people in the area. What most people have forgotten about is none of the deaths were attributed to the accident at the uh, Fukushima nuclear plant. As a matter of fact, all the studies have taken place since then indicate there won't be any long-term health effects in the surrounding area. Now, with that as a background, Looking at the global market, uh, it has had an impact. Uh, the uh, countries that were already on the verge, Germany, Belgium, and Europe in particular, uh, Japan itself, since obviously that was the country that the accident happened, have gone back and, and seriously considered the commitment to nuclear power. Uh, at the same time, a number of countries, both in Europe and non-OECD countries, have increased their uh, commitment to nuclear power as a result of Fukushima. So it's sort of a, a balanced overall view. Right now, we have about 65 new plants under construction around the world. We have countries that have never had nuclear power before, like the United Arab Emirates and, and Poland, looking at, uh, at new nuclear construction. So uh, there will be a, a period of reassessment and reevaluation, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, a little bit later. But, but overall, we think that this is a transient for the, for the industry and uh, we'll, we'll continue having a bright future going forward, especially given the need for clean power. And, and I, I think uh, that's really interesting to hear that there, is a, uh, that there are so many plans for, for nuclear energy. Um, has Westinghouse, how has Westinghouse incorporated the lessons learned from Fukushima? Actually, it's not just Westinghouse. Let's talk about the industry as a whole first, because you see Westinghouse has less of an impact than, than the rest of the industry. I'll talk about that in a second. But clearly, when an accident like that happens, you have to go back and evaluate why it happened, what contributed to it, what we should be doing differently going forward. So first of all, external environmental effects uh, are being scrutinized. All the plants, for example, in the U.S. have been reevaluated for earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, and so on. They all passed with flying colors, by the way. And well, also, if you recall, at Fukushima, a scare about the spent fuel pool. So we're going back and re-looking at how we are handling spent fuel in, in those reactors. Um, we're looking at the effects of multiple units on the same site, again, as a result of some of the lessons learned from Fukushima. And probably more important than anything else, we're looking at what we're to be doing differently uh, in terms of loss of off-site power uh, and, and uh, loss of uh, what we call ultimate heat sink. In other words, uh, these plants, even after you shut them down, they need to have cooling on an ongoing basis for a number of hours and days after that. And that's being done in the, in the current generation of plants using pumps and valves, which require electricity. Uh, and uh, we need to go back and, and see what is it we need to do in order to further strengthen that. Having said that, let me talk a little bit about the Westinghouse in particular, since you asked the question that way. Uh, Westinghouse has uh, a unique design that is being built right now, four units in China and four in the U.S., which a lot of people don't realize we have new construction in the U.S. And that plant, unlike the, uh, the Fukushima units, and unlike the, the current generation of plants, can withstand the type of accident that happened in Fukushima because it does not require uh, external power for up to three days uh, without any human intervention and indefinitely after that. Okay. So w what do you see next for the, the nuclear industry? Well, it's an evolving industry, and, and like all technologies, it continues to evolve and improve. Uh, the next uh, generation that we're working on is what we call the small modular reactor. It's basically taking the, uh, all the lessons learned from the first three generations of plants that are already out there 
and, and trying to, uh, to incorporate them into a single design, especially in the case of the Westinghouse uh, small modular reactor, which is about 225 megawatts electric, is, a, is an evolution of the AP1000, the, the reactor I was just talking about that's being built in China and the US, <coughs> the passive design. And that plant is basically a smaller version of that where we've taken everything that we had inside the containment and put them inside the vessel. So as a result of that, that plant can go for seven days without human intervention and indefinitely after that. Sounds like there's a lot of progress and uh, a lot to look forward to in, for the nuclear industry. Well, Dr. Kandris, I want to thank you for joining us and giving us your perspective on the future of the industry. So thank you. This has been another video uh, for Connected, AICHE's online community. Thank you.